we're going to talk about sequences, like sequences in calculus. But this time, it's not going to be that advanced. Uh, all you need to know for this is basically just limit. And even if you don't, I'll try to make it work for you. Okay, so what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is a chain of numbers represented by a of n. This is a function of n, which is basically the term number. So, a specific sequence would look like, for example, a of n equals 2n minus n. So, on term number 1, term number 2, term number 3, term number 4, so on, is probably going to be pretty obvious, but we're doing it anyway for the sake. Uh, 2 minus 1 is 1, obviously. Uh, 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 minus 3 is 5. And 16 minus 4 is 12. And so on and so on. Now, it might not be obvious, but... Uh, here we just have the number of the term plugged in. Alright, so that's how a sequence looks like. So, this sequence goes on forever and ever and ever. And sequences can do one of two things. They can either do what's known as converge, or they can diverge. To converge is to say that the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n. Now, if you don't know what the limit as n approaches infinity means, basically, that means this is an approximation of the value of a of n when n gets really big. So what does a of n approach uh, when n gets really big? And if the answer to that is some finite number, L, so less than uh, 0, uh, greater than 0, less than infinity, if the limit is n approaches infinity of a of n, it's just this number L, it's finite, then it does what is known as converge. But if it diverges, that means that the limit as n approaches infinity, or when n gets really, really big, of a of n is equal to one of the infinities, or it simply does not exist. An example of this is like 0 over 0. So, these are the two things that a sequence can do. Either converge or diverge. Uh, one second. Okay, so now we're going to so, uh, talk about a few examples, and let's see if they converge or diverge. About the sequence that we had before, a of n equals, no, not a of n equals 5n plus 1, mm, 2 to the n minus n. Does this converge or diverge? Well, think about it. 2 to the n obviously grows way faster than n does. So, 2 to the n, or as a result, the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n is very much bigger than the limit as n approaches infinity of n. That means that the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n minus n is going to approach infinity. So, as a result, this diverges. Now, let's take a look at a second example. Limit as n approaches infinity, so when n gets really, really big, of a of n, and let a of n be this 4n squared plus n divided by uh, 3n plus uh, or 3n minus 7777 don't ask why i joke that number 
Okay, so let's think about this. What does, does this converge or diverge? Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of this is kind of easy. Now, if you don't know, what we usually do when n approaches infinity, when we have a limit where our variable approaches infinity, we take all those lo lower uh, degrees, those variables of lower degrees. This one has a degree of one. In the denominator, this one has a degree of zero. So we take those and we basically just ignore them. Because the thing is, when the limit is n, if we have the limit is n approaches infinity, both of these things, x squared and x, one will obviously grow way faster than the other. So this will become a lot bigger than this as x approaches infinity. So that means that basically all numbers and variables of lower degrees can be fizzled out. They have no significance. Even 7777 7, 7, 7 might seem like a big number, but when n is in the hundreds of millions, 7,777 really makes no difference. So then, it's just the square root of 4n squared over 3n, which becomes 2n over 3n. And we have the limit as n approaches infinity of this. Now it's obvious to everyone, this just becomes 2 over 3. And since 2 over 3, is um, greater than zero, less than infinity, it is a finite number. That means that this converges. Let's also make this a little thick. Good. This is also, yeah. All right. So now, let's explore another weird case. 1 plus minus 1 to the nth power over n. The limit is n approaches infinity. Do you think this converges or diverges? Now, first of all, think about what these terms are going to approach. 1 plus minus 1 to the n over n sounds crazy, but let's look at it. 1 plus, what's the first term going to be? Minus 1 to the 1 divided by 1. So 1 plus minus 1 is going to be 0. The second term is going to be 1 plus minus 1 squared over 2, which is going to be 1 plus 1 half, or 3 over 2, because minus 1 squared is obviously going to be positive 1. Then we have 1 plus minus 1 cubed over 3 which is going to be 1 minus 1 third or 2 thirds. So 0, 3 halves, 2 thirds. Then we have 1 plus 1 fourth, 1 minus 1 fifth, etc. So 1 plus 1 fourth, 1 minus 1 fifth, which is going to be this. 1 plus 1 sixth, 1 minus 1 seventh, etc etc now as you can see here we're adding one half here we're subtracting one third here we're adding one fourth here we're subtracting one fifth here we're adding one sixth and here we've uh we were subtracting one seventh now as you can see <laughs> these amounts that we're adding and subtracting by grow smaller and smaller. One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seventh. They grow ever smaller. So that means when we're visualizing it, let's say this line is y equals one. On the x-axis we have n, in the y-axis we have y. Then if we have one, two, three, four, five, and so on, it's going to look like this. First, uh, <coughs> As we talked about, at 1, it's 0. At 2, it's 3 halves. At 3, it's 2 thirds. At 4, it's 5 fourths. At 5, it's uh, 4 fifths. 
and it goes on and on. But as you can see, it has a trend of coming uh, closer and closer to what? So we say as n grows bigger, the limit as n approaches infinity of this is going to be equal to one by oscillation. You can also do this another way if you like. This other way is like this. Now the limit as n approaches infinity of a constant like one is meaningless. So we can just take it out of there. Then we have the limit as n approaches infinity of minus one to the n over n. Now the thing is, when we have minus one to any power, it can be one of two things. Either an even power, which gives us one, or an odd power, which gives us minus one. But either way, the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity for negative one of n. They're both zero. So that means the limit as n approaches infinity of this is just going to be zero. So one plus zero, one. Now we're going to do one final example. Oh yeah, by the way, since this is a constant value, it converges. Now we're going to do one final, very confusing example. Does this converge? Take a second to think about it. Converge or diverge. Five, four, pause the video for more time. Two, one. Well, it actually diverges. Why, you might think? Well, the thing is, you're going to say sine of n is only between minus 1 and 1. It's not going to approach minus infinity or infinity. But remember one crucial thing about divergence. It can also be a DNE does not exist. The thing is, since sine of n isn't going to damp, the size of the oscillations isn't going to get smaller like it did over here. It's forever going to oscillate between minus 1 and 1. And when n approaches infinity, we don't know. It's going to be something between minus 1 and 1, but we don't know what it's going to be because it's endlessly going to oscillate between these two. So this is a DNE by oscillation. It does not exist. So this diverges. All right, and we're going to end it off by giving you a taste of what we're going to be doing in the next lesson. So what we're going to be talking about next time is what we call series, infinite series, which is basically a sum of the terms of a series from n equals 1 to infinity. And they can converge or diverge. They converge if the series approaches a specific sum from n equals 1 to infinity, some specific sum L, and it diverges if we got the same condition plus minus infinity or DNE. So, now think about this while you, pro uh, right before you progress into the next lesson. I'm Sabrina Isaac Berry from Berry Science Lab. We'll see you in the next one.